Hello everyone, welcome to another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today we'll be looking at some free-for-all gameplay on the map Solace. This is in the Global FFA Championship playlist. Now, right off the start here, I want to zoom around the map and show you guys a little bit of what comes up on Solace and what the strategy is I'm going to try to be making. Now, of course, in the free-for-all Global Championship, you're going to have normal weapons spawn on the map, which is really nice, so you can get your ammo back. Of course, you have the two snipers. Um, in either tower, and um, for these settings you have the sticky debt on the side over here, and bottom middle, I believe, you will have the sword right here, and those are the power weapons that come up on the map. They cycle through. There's no random ordnance on the map, and the only ordnance you get in this playlist are grenades. The loadout I am using is dexterity, shielding, with thruster pack, of course, the battle rifle and bolt shot. Battle rifle is very standard for free-for-all. Now, where am I going to be staying during this free-for-all? Which locations am I going to frequent? Well, typically on Solace, you don't want to be outside of the bases unless you see other people or a bunch of people outside of the bases. You want to be trying to clean up other people's kills, or kill stealing is the main term for it, and you want to be destroying those people who have low shields before people actually get to those kills ahead of you. You want to let other people do the work for you, and you can do that a lot of times from the bases, whether you can look down from the tower or whether you can um, be on some of these pillars over here. Now, the main thing to notice is I have the battle rifle, so I'm not going to necessarily charge the towers and grab the sniper rifle because the battle rifle is not a really long-range weapon. So I'm going to immediately push down and begin shooting this guy. Again, I take out the guy closest to me because if I was not able to kill him, I would have at least been able to land a melee and trade with him. Turns out I can just clean up his teammate though. Now, this is an excellent example of a feint. Look how my shields are half strength right now. Feinting in free-for-all is key, or faking out your opponent. Okay, Right now, I'm going to fake it. I'm going to fake for a half second, and it really doesn't take that long to fake someone out. But I'm going to fake that I'm going to hide behind cover right here. Watch how I avoid his fire, put some shots on him, and then hop right back out. He doesn't even expect it, and I end up nailing many shots around the box. That is one of the main reasons why you can use the battle rifle in these sorts of situations, is because you can begin firing your weapon before you're even around the box. Notice how I even hit the wall a few times, hit the box a few times, as I'm trying to hit him. That's okay, as long as most of my shots land on him. Exterior is extremely handy in a uh, free-for-all. Now right here is a very interesting tip on the map Solace. If you go up here, if you are up on this higher level, all right? Now look at my radar right now. There's a red dot, okay? Well, there's, the red dot is normally appearing when this guy stands on this lower level, okay? So this is the lower level has a ramp that goes down to it. Watch what happens when I jump. He's still on that lower level, but on my radar, it's appearing like he's a level below me. Because technically he is, but that's an interesting thing to know on Solace, how players will appear below you if you jump on this higher level, even though they're not necessarily on a dip below you on the map. Right here, I've noticed a guy and I'm going to chunk a random maid. Um, I see Crushy over there, and Crushy, uh, the brown guy, ends up making a really good decision here. Um, he jumps into this box and cleans me up with a scatter shot. This is the guy who I end up battling basically the entire way. So I immediately identify that he is a decently good player. And if you look at my um, stats here, there's only one brown player in the game. The other brown player quit, which means that Crushy is the guy who's brown. Typically, and you really need to go over the colors here, I, g I go with my own color green. I don't really care about how everyone tends to go gray. Everyone seems to want to go gray, red, or brown, or something of that nature, a very dark color, because you're not as noticeable, you don't stand out. If you have yellow armor, people are gonna go after you like no tomorrow, because they, you're, you're a huge target, basically. You wanna wear something that's dark. Uh, besides that, I really don't care for everyone wearing gray. Um, although if you're really wanting to get good at free-for-all, you might wanna start by wearing gray armor so that you blend in with everyone else. Here's the reason why, okay? I identified Crushy through his brown color. This is key to the rest of the game. I did not identify him through his name. 
I identify him through his color. So I am literally going to be battling him for the position. And as you can see, look at my, I look at the score right now. It was, it was just a second ago, Crushy had um, some points there on the scoreboard. Now it's another guy. And this guy also lands a really good body shot on me. I'm glad he didn't, he didn't try to no scope. That's a great example of um, body shotting someone. The unfortunate thing about Solace is that you get extremely good spawns like this. And notice how this is the same guy who just killed me. Okay. I'm immediately going to push back into this base. How can you tell that you're at this base? Well, this is a metallic base. This is the outer base, the outside base, the metallic base. Then there's forest base on the other side. So if you spawn and you have forestry around you, you're at forest base, all right? And this is forest snipe tower. You're gonna to be pushing up forest ramp into forest snipe tower. On this side, it's a metal tower or metal snipe tower, if, if that's what you wanna call it. It's a very open position. I'm going to grab the sniper rifle here, but again, someone spawns behind me, and I, this is why I do not recommend camping the tower. It is not a good idea. It rarely works out because people will spawn behind you. Now, I turn, and who do I see it is? Crushy. All right? So what am I going to do? Am I going to try to no-scope him? Well, of course, while I'm jumping off the tower, I might as well try, but I'm going to not let him get this kill on me because he is above me right now. Look at my score, okay? I've identified that he's a good player. He's killed me, okay? So he, he must be okay at the game. So what I'm gonna try to do here right now is not allow him to get this kill on me. I'm going to thrust to pack off and immediately faint. He was expecting me to go here. He was expecting me to go through this doorway, which he would have been easy to kill. But instead, I thrust to pack off and immediately back away and he is not going to get this kill on me. Another guy is going to clean me up. And that's exactly what I want. I want to frustrate Crushy and waste his time on enemy opponents that don't really matter. I end up doing that another two times in the game. Thrust packing over here, looking to try to pick up an easy kill here. I end up getting stuck on a uh, box at one point in the game, which is very unfortunate. Right here, that's a good trade. Really good trade right there. Um, you want to be trading your kills constantly in free-for-all. Maybe you don't get a double kill or go 2.0, but that's okay. As long as you're constantly getting those kills. Now right here, why am I jumping off to the right? Because this guy was focused on the guy I killed up here. But this guy is focused on him which means he's going to be weak, and sure enough, he is. And guess who that is? That's probably Crushy, if I remember correctly. And of course, Crushy's going to run, and that's a really good maneuver, because he wants to get away. He doesn't want to give me a kill, and he doesn't want to give other people kills. You do want to be constantly trading, and again, he comes back once his shields are redone, look at my radar, and he ends up killing me here. It's a very good maneuver on his part coming back and flustering me. He actually ends up killing me most out of anyone else in the game, I believe. Why am I not using my ordnance? Well, I have two grenades already, so there's really not a whole lot of point for me to use my ordnance at this point. And in normal free-for-all, in a normal infinity free-for-all, you'll have, of course, normal ordnance. But, you know, this is a good example because uh, the ordnance doesn't distract from the gameplay, I guess, is the main point. I get really uh, a bad maneuver here on my part. I get stuck on the boxes, and this is just, again, it's just a bad play on my part. Well, I'm leaving it in to let you guys know, even good players make mistakes like this. It will happen. Now, notice how I'm not charging this guy. And notice how also that guy who was one shot, I didn't charge around the corner at him. In free-for-all, you don't want to charge around the corner at people because they will nade you almost every time. Look how this guy nades me as soon as I charge him. You gotta be really careful about those nades. Now, this is an excellent maneuver on my part. Again, I faint back, pretending to run up the ramp away from him. He would have killed me if I have done would have done that. So he comes around the corner, guess what he's doing? Sprinting. Okay? Which means he doesn't have his weapon up. So I get the first shot. If I land two of my battle rifle shots on him, I can melee him and kill him. Now this, I take this guy totally by surprise because I fainted back and ran up the ramp and then jumped forward and literally ambushed him around the corner and was able to get that pummel. He never saw it coming. He didn't even have time to melee. And that's a really good maneuver, fainting back. And 
my shield's recharging a little uh, quicker when it starts recharging, it, the bar fills up a little faster because I'm using shielding. I end up using the scattershot pretty well here. Um, if you have a good connection, scattershot is a little more consistent. Um, I claim this easy one shot here. Scatter rifle's great at cleaning up those guys from behind. Almost always. I, I put some shots in on Crushy, making him weak, suppressing him. Again, look at the scoreboard. He has one more kill than I do. So that's what I need to do here. This guy ends up killing me. Um, my main mistake here is that I kill, pulled out my battle rifle. I should have pulled out my scatter shot. I don't know why I did. And I also don't know why I was um, jumping so much there. It just was a little bit overboard. Now notice how I'm going to back down from this because the battle rifle is not built for these situations where you force the fire cross map. The DMR and light rifle are but the battle rifle is much more consistent at close range, which is the main majority of the, of the encounters that you will visit in free fall. This guy's a sniper, I don't know really why he charged me there. I end up getting a pretty good double kill to secure a good lead. Wish I could have gotten the, uh, the triple, but this guy is uh, pretty... And notice how they clean that guy up. That guy was one shot, but they stole the kill there, and that's really a good idea. Again, I'm not calling down my ordinance because I don't need to. Look at who it is. It's Crushy. He has ambushed me and surprised me, cleaning up this guy's kill, and most likely, he's going. And look, he comes around the corner and just cleans up that kill. An easy double kill for Crushy. I really need to not let that happen if I'm going to win this game. This is a jump you can make in normal free for all. You can make it without sprinting, but I end up not making it here. It's not a big deal, though, because there's no power weapons, and I don't see anyone on my radar, so I end up charging this way. And it works out pretty, really, really well for me. Um, good decision-making on my part as I get the overkill. Now, I need to walk you guys through this a little bit more, because some people, it's, re it's really difficult for a lot of people to do this in free-for-all, and it is for me as well, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The thing is, I'm shooting at the guy who's the weakest. Always shoot at the guy who is the weakest. The battle rifle is incredible at stealing people's kills. So this guy is hiding. So I'm going to steal Crushy's kill. Again, this is really good because I end up killing Crushy in this multi-kill. So I kill him. I rotate around the corner. Look who look what this guy was firing at. Him. Look who's firing at him. This guy. Okay, so who am I going to kill? This guy next. Now, it does tend to work in my favor because the rotation is on in my point of view. But it, that's what, what you consistently want to do with mold and matchmaking is fire at the guy who is the weakest. I go for the kill tackle, hoping that that guy's weak. Don't end up getting that kill, but that's okay. And now I do end up assisting probably Crushy here. I'm not quite sure. Again, I don't stay in the tower. I back out to the side because there's no point to do that. Again, I'm shooting at the guy who's being shot at. Now I'm going to switch over and try to attack Crushy here. He ends up out BRing me very well. Also, I'm getting shot in the back, so that doesn't help at all. Again, I'm in the middle of the map. Probably not the best idea. I should have gone to the side a little bit more. I would have been able to pick up that kill and probably Request not die. Point. Now, another key thing is to remember where players are. This is a great example right here. Okay, you, you notice how there's some other person firing at that dude? How I didn't notice from the side someone is firing at him? I'm going to guess that that's Crushy, because that's where I died from. And sure enough, there is Crushy. Okay? So I need to be very careful and not let him get that kill. It's flustering him because he, he now wasted bullets and time on that guy and ending up not getting the kill. And right here, I know that that's probably Crushy in my radar because that's the guy who's firing me. So I'm going to react accordingly. He's the only guy contending me for the lead. So I'm going to be very careful and not die to him. Again, I use my thruster pack to stay away. The only time you want to completely waste someone's time, and even waste your own, is if you're wasting the time of the guy who's directly above or below you on the scoreboard. That's the only reason why you would want to do that. Or the guy who's about to win the game, of course. 
So right now, I'm wasting Crushy's time. He's pursuing me because he knows I'm probably in the lead. I'm just wasting my nades, just wasting time. And what ends up happening is a very, very desirable scenario. For whatever reason, another enemy player comes along and melees Crushy and ends up killing him. And I end up getting this kill. Again, completely wasting Crushy's time. I now have a four kill lead. Never do that unless it's on the, with the person who you're contending for the lead. Never do that. You're always going to want to be get trying to get the next kill, regardless of whether necessarily you're going to die or not. This guy ends up out BRing me very, very well. Um, I end up fleeing my reticle around way too much, and I don't know why I jumped towards him there. and should have jumped a little farther away. I think this is the point where I use the scatter shot pretty effectively. I can see Crushy, and I'm going to try to not let him get that sniper rifle, so I made the made the tower. So I know Crushy's there. I know that he's one kill behind me. So I'm going to try to mess with him as much as possible. Again, how am I able to identify this guy's Crushy? Not by his name, by the fact that he's a brown color. Okay, And he's the only guy in the game who's brown, and he's brown on the bottom right. The bottom right will show... Either, either show the guy who's in first place, you or another person, and it'll show, if you're first place, it'll show the guy directly below you. That's all that the scoreboard shows. It's very handy because it gives you the actual scores you need to be contending with. Now notice right here, I know Crushy's not necessarily going to charge me. He knows I have something. I'm not immediately charging him. He probably knows that. So I go over here, and this is where Shotgun outclasses sword in almost every way. If you pull that trigger first, you'll get the kill. I don't know if Crushy doesn't see here that I have the scattershot, um, but he ends up dying to that. Another thing about scattershot, it's inconsistent. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. Those two kills I got were insanely fast, and it was an immediate, instant kill with the scattershot. That does not always happen, but that's also why you can fire the scattershot so fast. I end up doing a terrible maneuver here if I can pull out my scattershot. Scattershot does not work at range. It's probably even more so true than the shotgun for sure. You never want to use the scattershot at range. Even though it fires fast and even though those streams of light seem to go a really long way, they don't. Now look what I'm going to do here. Again, stealing kills. And I'm going to chase this guy down because he's one shot. Crushy's in the other tower. I can't get to him. So I'm, again, I'm in jungle tower. Now. What is, why does this guy do this? Okay, If the guy looked at his scoreboard in the bottom right, if he carefully examined the score, look, look at his score on the bottom right. He knows that I'm a green player. He knows that I'm in the lead because he can see on the scoreboard. Why does he then assist? If I can come to here. Come out here. Instead of hiding behind this rock and maybe going over here, he jumps back out again, allowing me to pull more shots on him and allowing me to keep his shields low. Again, the next, this kill I get with the battle rifle, extremely ind indicative of just using the battle rifle. I see Crushy and Ventronic with some shots on him, but I end up finding the 25th kill pretty quickly. Uh, again, a very close game as Crushy was only 10, well, only one score behind me. He just got um, his 24th kill and I end up getting the victory there. So guys, if this helped you understand a little better how to play Free For All, and if you it helped you understand how to play Solace, uh, give this video a like or thumbs up. Um, if you like these sort of videos where I slow down the game and give you some in-depth tips, um, subscribe for more videos like that, and I'll see you on the next video or whatever I end up making. Peace, guys.